Welcome, 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 everybody. Everybody who's been following me, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. We are over a thousand subscribers now. Uh, well, actually, we've been over a thousand subscribers for a minute. Uh, my next uh, goal now is to hit 5,000 subscribers. Uh, well, now let's just be real. Let's, let's just slow walk this thing because building your, your online presence and building your, your channels and your YouTube. Uh, it's more for your viewers to have confidence in your skill set than it is for you to just go all off willy nilly gung ho uh, and swinging for the fences trying to get all of these followers. Uh, I like to build my page on substance and substance. And I hope that is giving you guys something that you can add into your arsenal as well and grow. And the longer you can, longer you do this, the more you, the more you are going to grow. So today, uh, I'm going to just be talking about. Um, we're going to stick sort of like in that theme of small, small projects that can make you a lot of bank. But I decided to give you guys the top, my top five money makers of small projects. Now, with me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm not one of these crafters who's just going to be a gatekeeper and sit on the knowledge. <laughs> you know, you'll see a lot of these people that have come out here and they 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 have these they have these uh, platforms, but they want to be a gatekeeper to the knowledge and just try to keep all of the kudos. And they really just don't pass off any true knowledge. They really just on here low key trying to sell you some of their stuff. Um, now that is, is to me, ladies and gentlemen, that goes hand in hand. I mean, it's quite obvious. We want you guys to look at our work and now for those of you who aren't crafters, for those of you who aren't crafters, we definitely want you to look at our work. I have to fix my, uh, fix my glasses here. They was kind of sitting crazy. There we go. Um, of course, quite naturally, if you're not a crafter, we want you to look at our work, our work, and we want you to buy something because that's what keeps us in business and that's why we do it. Uh, but overall, if my platform is for you newer crafters or intermediate crafters who are just starting out, want to know the craft, want to know what you can do and, and the tools that make certain things look how they look, uh, uh, you know, and just knowing how to manipulate and actually leaning more often to the artistry of leather crafting than it is the manufacturing part of it. This is why we as leather crafters, we charge so much because of the artistry. We get off, I'm going to say me, I get off more on being able to create something and design something and I can see it no matter where I'm at, no matter where in the world, where in the country I am, I know that's a premier leather crafted piece right there. Because every artist, it's just like painting, uh, pottery, wood making, uh, anything that involves you building something from nothing with these two hands, you can always spot your work out. That's the part that a lot of the majority of crafters that I know, you know, is, is being able to get off onto that and to pass that knowledge off to keep the craft going. We all will have that eventual come in one day. <laughs> we all are going to answer that call, whether we want to or not. But the legacy is the knowledge that we have had over these years of leaving it with somebody else after that. That's how someone lives forever. Now, let me get out my soapbox because this video is not only is just talking about the uh, 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 small projects that can make you a lot of bank. But I'm going to give you guys my top five, my top five leather ideas that I have been doing this over over the past 27 years. And these are my go-to. 
even when I am, uh, um, even when the phone has slowed down or the orders online has slowed down, I can always go to these small projects to keep myself busy, to keep the creativity going. And it allows me to go in and thin out my scrap box. Let me show you guys, for instance. Ah, because we're still in the middle of doing this. Another small project. I'll get to that in a minute. We're going to show you guys that. But you guys see that scrap box right there? That is... <laughs> Of being uh, uh, accumulated over, um, I'm gonna say we're just on and off doing different projects. We got a hide of leather that's sitting over there in that corner, and we just come back from Tandy shopping and getting more leather, uh, cranking and turning out and putting out orders. So you accumulate a lot of scrap. And that's what this video is basically going to be dealing with. Even the, the motorcycle mask that's back here. Now, I bought this pattern from, um, I can't think of the steampunk guy that's on YouTube. He's on this on, on YouTube as well. But uh, I bought that pattern because when I was used to do motorcycle uh, ma mask, I was doing a one-piece motorcycle mask. Then I saw one of his videos to where he had that particular mask is three pieces, three pieces sewn together. What I also loved about this mask is, is more contoured shape to the face than mine was. It, my, my, my leather mask, and if you guys can go back through some of my old photos, you'll see that it required a lot of wet molding. Uh, a, lot, a lot of me to do a lot of wet molding, wet forming. But his pieces were already, uh, you can put three pieces together, which runs right along with this scrap box. I can go in and get three pieces of scrap out of there that's generally the same size. Instead of trying to hang on to a nice uh, big eight to 10 inch one piece, I can get three scrap pieces and put that leather motorcycle mask together. And then everything else is, even the straps are scrapped. So that's a great, 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 great pattern to purchase and buy, especially when you're trying to tie this into small projects. That will be classified as a small project because that's all that it covers, just the face. Just the bottom half of your face. And if you guys you didn't know anybody that's in the motorcycle world, especially in the state of Florida, South Carolina, and there, I think there's a couple other states where they have no helmet law, but you, you want to have something on your, uh, on your some goggles on or a face mask. I recommend a mask, a motorcycle mask, because, man, you have rocks popping up off of the street behind other cars, bugs if you're riding at night, and bugs hurt. Let me tell you from somebody who rode for 12 years, bugs hurt when you are running 90 and 100 miles an hour and you have an apple bug. Man, that thing feels like you've been shot. But anyway, uh, small projects that can create you a lot of bank. We'll get to those. I might. I don't want to do a video on the motorcycle mask because that's not my original pattern, uh, the overall shape. And, and, and design of it. Now, the, the tool and work that's done on the mask is mine, which anybody can do that. But uh, we're going to get up into to that. And we're going to also, I'm going to do another video later on down the road. Not even later on, but as it starts to get warmer, I'm going to start doing a whole month of just motorcycle gear that you can create and make major and look you can make a lot of money oh let, let me y'all come in and let, let me tell you this because you can make a lot of money doing motorcycle accessories a lot i mean if you're in the right state or if you're in, whatever even if you're whatever your skill level is man you can make a grip I'm talking about at least five to eight thousand dollars a month just doing motorcycle stuff. Easy. We'll get to that later on. But 
um, that motorcycle mask, that pattern is not mine, but the overall work is. So let's get right off into this video here because I want to talk about my top five go-tos. These little jewels right here, ladies and gentlemen, small projects. These little jewels right here are my go-to. And all of these are created out of scrap. So one, the leather is already paid for because you've already done one project with it already. So it's already paid for. So the only other thing, things that I had to buy was the elastic band. Now you can get this elastic band. And I'm going to tell you guys what this is in a second. You can get these elastic bands. You can buy up to three, three, five, and 10 yards of the elastic at Wally World, Joann's, Michael's, or any hobby craft store or any fabric store. You can get this elastic, the same elastic that's in your britches or in women's in clothes. But you can get definitely Walmart would be the cheapest. Unless you can just go online and you might can buy a little round spool. Uh, you can get away with black universally. But what these are, ladies and gentlemen, these are ID cards or credit card wallets. These sell very well. Now, depending, let me get this in here where you guys can see the uh, tooling work that's done on these. Just a simple basket weave. I did a little airbrush work and some antiquing uh, with some resoline on the inside. And then we just sprayed a little light airbrush and sewed it up. Did the geometric basket weave stamp just to give it some, something different. And I, I sewn, you can see right here where we sewn the elastic in between the two, the linings. This is just a regular uh, goat skin liner. You can use pig lining or whatever, uh, whatever lining you want to use. Or if you want to use two layers of leather, that's fine. But as you can see here, you want to make sure that this elastic goes all the way through and touches the other side because you really want it to be a strong hole when they start to put their cards and their ID in here. And the elastic makes this real tight. Now, you guys might have saw these on Amazon. Amazon sells the, uh, the Kydex kind, just plain Jane Kydex credit card holders. There's nothing fancy snancy to it. You can't personalize it. You can't be creative with it. It can hold anywhere from 10 to 15 cards. So I took the same concept of holding 10 to 15 cards and just applied that to the uh, elastic. Now, I like the elastic because you can go in and push your cards out and find whichever ones that you want to get to. And then we buy back that up with this little backing piece. Now, this part is not necessary in a sense. Plus, it gave me an opportunity to put my logo on there, too. <laughs> so, but what it did was uh, I, I came with the secondary part because in each one of these pieces comes the RFID paper. And in that RFID paper, it allowed me to um, it allowed me to um, protect the identity. So if nobody can come by with those card readers and swipe your cards that's in your wallet. So in between each one of these is your RFID paper. Now, um, and then I, I just sit back and do several of these at a time. Here's another one. Same basket weave stamp. Just come back and did it just a little bit different layout. Same two-tone uh, spray. Just make them nice and neat. Uh, put my my, my, uh, my logo in there. You know, just keep them nice, clean, and crisp. Then I had some leftover ostrich, you know. All of this is put together with just the scrap pieces of leather. Same. Now, the key selling point to this, ladies and gentlemen, is the RFID paper. 
The RFID paper is the selling point to these crafts here or these projects here. The RFID paper. So nobody can scan their, their wallet or scan their pocket and get their ID. Small projects make you a lot of money. Now, uh, Amazon is selling the Kydex ones for 30, 35 bucks. Uh, you can sell these anywhere from 35 to 50. Plus, you can personalize them uh, if they want their name stamped into it or if they want some type of little slogan. Uh, I did one for a customer that wanted a prayer. It was some kind of scripture from, from the Bible that talked about money. And uh, he wanted me to stamp that in there. I mean, you can do that. We have stamps that's small enough to where you can type in a scripture in there. Uh, we have stamps that's small enough to put the two initials. If you have a three-quarter stamps, you can put the two initials. Um, I don't know about carving in something this small. You can if your skill set level, level is there, you can. But I primarily just do uh, just a nice little quick work with these. And these can go anywhere from 35 to 50 bucks. And again, you can sit back and tool out 50 of these. I mean, let's just say reasonable. You got enough scrap to do 20. Simple mathematics, ladies and gentlemen. 20 times 25. Huh? 500 bucks all day long. And just these. And then if you're, especially if you're set up at a flea market or somewhere like that, you can stamp out enough of these. You can make enough of these to where they will literally take up space. So um, I would suggest you get some type of clear um, plastic container and you stack these up in there just like so. Uh, let me show you. You stack these up in there just like so. And then you can have them just thumb through and pick the one that they want. You know, just pick the one they want. And then you can sit back, you know, 25 bucks, 25 bucks a piece. You make 20 of these. That's $500 just in these. Mm. No cap. And then the more you make, you can never run out of it. So let's just say you're set up. You got that same scenario. You set up at a market or a festival or somewhere like that. And um, nobody's spending any money on your belts or your bracelets or your whatever else. But you sat back and made seven hundred to a thousand dollars selling these. Men love these. Women love these. They can buy them for their husband. It is it's very small and it's very personable. Um, I'm going to show you guys my personal one that I carry, and it's this one. This is my Python. I had some leftover scrap Python left. Not enough to do a project with. I mean, not enough to do any big projects with. I might could have inlaid a belt or something with it. But I was like, hey, look, let me make my own. Now, mine is a little different because mine is a complete bottom shape. And this is just an alternative to this one. It's just an alternative. It doesn't now still got the little elastic strip at the top because I wanted to keep it together. Now you don't have to go elastic. You can go with a leather strip if you want to use some more, get uh, empty out more of that scrap box. But, and then what I did different was I cut me a finger slot. Ah, I cut me a finger slot for mine. You know, it's just something you can get too quick. That's it. Something you can get too quick. Now, any other time, you know, like say if I want to go deep and get a card, I just pull them out and then I just go through my cards and get them out of there. But it's big enough to hold 10 to 15 uh, credit cards and ID cards and anything else you want to put in there. So now let's keep this moving right along. So that's project number one of these top five, my top five go-tos. So let's get right back at it. Now, this one here is um, a new project. Actually, it's, well, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's not new to the leather crafting world, but I just really started rolling with this new one, and it is the trucker hats. Some people call them the snapbacks. 
uh, again, I, and I did one video on this already, but I wanted to tie this into because this is now turning into a surefire money maker. Woo! It's enough to where you can put down, you can put something small, other something else that's small to the back of the burners and pump out a lot of these. Now, there is an added expense with this particular project because you have to buy the hat. Now, uh, I gave you guys the game on buying these from uh, Timu, uh, AliExpress, or you can get them from Amazon. Now, if you can find your problem, and you just go where you can find the cheap versions at, just to see how they rock and roll. Buy you 10 of them. Buy you 10 of these. You're going to spend less than 30 bucks. Shipping and handling and all together, you're going to spend 30, about 30 bucks for 10 of these. Now, these retail anywhere, uh, depending on your skill set and what all you do to it. I'm going to show you guys one of my patterns that uh, I am coming out with, uh, and and I'm just playing around with some new stuff. I'm thinking about creating this and making this a new leather line, uh, a part of Premier Leather Crafters, uh, and there's going to be a series on these hats. But, however, uh, I paid $1.75 for each one of these. Um, a good branded company, a good reputable company. This is uh, this company is Port Authority. And I like the reviews that uh, I got when I read about Port Authority. Uh, I like the company, um, the history. They've been around for over 20 years and they had a 4.5 star rating uh, over 20 years. Now, and that's something else, especially when you're buying these from over across the pond. One, I'm going to give you this free game real fast. When you're buying stuff across the pond, you want to check the, the ratings. And you want to check how long they have been in business. And also, when you click onto that particular store, you want to make sure that they are in or on one of the main <sighs> I'm sorry, you guys. You want to make sure that they're on one of the mainlands. Um, so now there are a bunch of companies. You'll probably find some of these for as little as 80 cents. But if they're up in the bush somewhere, it's going to take them four or five days to strap these onto a mule and hike down to a boat that's going to take them to the mainland to where they can get to a post office or, or whoever carrier they use over there. So you want to look at, you want to make sure that they have a, I don't deal with any company across the water that's lower than a 4.5. You got, I might if you got a 4.3, but your reviews are stellar with them 4.3s. Uh, and I also check to make sure that they've been in business for over 10 years. Um, and I, I want to make sure that they're on a mainland that's over across the water because that way it cuts down on my shipping time. Instead of waiting six to eight weeks, that's the difference between waiting uh, five to seven days. Especially when you're in our world to where a uh, customer is ordering something and you already want to get the product. I mean, you've already bought yourself at least a week or two with creating, but you don't want it to be where they're waiting 10 to 12 weeks on a, on, on, on a product. I mean, it's, it's not a saddle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's not boots. <laughs> so you, you want to, and, and my particular business model is not just a high, fast turnover. I want to give myself time to make it. And I want the customer to understand too. And, and I'm going to drop this, this gem real quick. Turning out products fast, do, do, do not attach that to your business model. You do not want to be a one or two day crafter. Fast work like that denotes to the consumer that is put together fast is put together cheap. So stay within that nothing less than two weeks. I don't care if you can make a belt in two hours. It's going to take two weeks. Why is that? Because and literally this allows you 
to take your time, perfect your craftsmanship, because that's what the customer is paying for. They're paying for that craftsmanship, the artistry. Take your time. Now, let's get back to this. Uh, you want to make sure that you get these to where a reputable company. Anything lower than those, ladies and gentlemen, do not order from them because it's going to take a long time for you to get your stuff. And it's going to be made, put together cheap because somebody up in the bush is making these in a tiki hut somewhere. So keep that in mind. But you can get these. I, I paid $1.75 for mine. So guess what? When you're ordering 20 of these, that's only 40 bucks, less than 50 bucks with the shipping and handling. But I can turn around when I get through taking my scrap leather and up to applying this to this, applying it to this, this these hats. Now I can com I, I can command anywhere from 40 to $65 per hat. One hat will pay for my entire inventory. You see where we go with this. This is why I titled these small projects that can make you a lot of money because one, either, either the material is already paid for and this is just extra gravy on the biscuit or one of your products can pay for your entire inventory and now the remaining 19 is all profit. Imagine you got 10 of these set up on your display table. And I encourage you guys, uh, like we got the mannequins in there, you can get those mannequins uh, uh, off of Amazon for two bucks. Get you some mannequins. Uh, uh, and and it, it's other videos that's out here, but I can tell you real quick, uh, 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 get you a, a um, somebody who's into the woodcrafting world. If you can't do it yourself, get you some old one by fours. Uh, and, and cut them like a little tower stair step thing. And then uh, the bottom of those those uh, uh, mannequins have a hole in them. So you can either take you some screws or take you some nails. Then that way you can just push them down on top of there to keep the wind from blowing them off. But if you really want to get jazzy with that, you just take you a, a, a wood dial, glue it into the inside of, of, of that mannequin head, and then you can just run you a screw up through your wood dial. See, that way when you put putting these on display. Now, presentation means a lot, especially when you're at a city festival or if you're at an arts and craft festival or arts and craft show or if you're at the flea market. Presentation sells a lot of your products. That's why I have so many of those heads. You know, we got 20 of those heads and each head gets a cap. Each head get some mask. Not want to say each head, but you guys know what I'm saying. Uh, and some heads with the mask and some heads with the caps. So when you're putting these on display and then the people, the consumer, when they're walking past your setup or your tent, they can already see what it looks like on them. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Now, let me show you real quick what I'm talking about with these because I was drawing these out. Now, I'm coming up with a new um, a line, um, and it's going to be called whoop, Big Cock Trucker Hats. Now, before anybody gets their knickers in a knocker, there is another company called Big Cock Cattle Company. Completely different. So make sure when you're coming up with these names, make sure that you do your research. Come, Big Cock Cattle Company is not Big Cock Custom Leather Hats. Two different companies, two different brands, two different things, two different concepts. The logo is different. They actually, but that's getting off into another thing. But don't let my the legalities of some stuff come across you because I can easily change the, the chicken out and call it Big Fish. Hmm? I can easily do that. That's the beautiful part about what we do in this leather industry or in this leather world is, um, and I'm going to drop this gem to you too and tell you why we do that. Um, 
but you can easily change it to anything. Big fish, big baby, big worm. I can call anything that you can um, get or download that is free artwork. This is free clip art. So I didn't have to pay anything. This is why this work does not infringe upon anybody's trademark because this chicken is completely, or this rooster, is completely different. So if anybody has ever seen a Big Cop Cattle Company uh, logo, you can automatically see it is completely different. Theirs is more on the square pets. This is taken from my years in the motorcycle world. Uh, and then the Big Cop is just a play on, on ego. Now, remember, if you guys have watched any other videos of mine, I told you there's three things that if you do these three things, you can sell to anybody. If it solves a problem, serves a need, or serves a purpose, a better mousetrap, or caters to the ego, you can sell. And ladies and gentlemen, Big Cock is all about ego. All right? Big Cock is all ego. So I, I, I don't know. It's just a tool that marketers use, we as marketers, because if you're in your own business, you're going to be marketing yourself. It's just That's just a free tool for marketers to use to sell more products. So when I see somebody wearing my big cock hat, you know, and then you can you can joke and play, especially if you're set up at a flea market or a festival or arts and crafts show. You can say, hey, man, I like that hat. What, you like my big cock? It just... Makes it funny. <laughs> you can't say that without laughing. Now, you got a big cop too? Yeah, I got a big cop. You know, hey, you know, you can have the whole entire, trust me, it's already happened. I can, you can have the whole entire uh, uh, flea market grounds. Everybody's talking out big cops. God, I got my big cop, you know, and then they point to the hat. But things like this, and this is all the material you will need to do these this project. Scrap, scrap piece for this, and this this little diamond here is going to go on the upper part of the hat. Upper part of the hat is going to be sewn in somewhere here, and then on the bill is. This one here, I'm go with some a little nice basket weave design or some type of little design background that background the uh, well here I'm reverse I'm trying to work reverse on the camera uh, here I'm gonna do some nice little background and carve out my big cock here and then I'm gonna stain it all one color or dye it all one color and then we're gonna sew it onto the bill and sew my big cock diamond onto the top. Project number two. In the books, out the way. And the best way for you to do that is get you some masking tape. Now, I'll go ahead and you guys can go back and look at another video where I showed you how to go ahead. Bend this how the kids are wearing it. Now, if you're in Alabama, they're going to give you an A-frame. <laughs> I don't know what it is about <laughs> country folks. Alabama, Georgia, and the SIP. Oh, you're going to have an A-frame bill. I mean, boom, that thing is going to be A-frame. And most times it's going to have a fishing hook on it. But um, you can do, you go ahead and bend this, whatever area uh, is a style in your area. Go ahead and bend it. And then take you some masking tape and tape it. Once you get it taped, then you want to cut it out with the with the box with the straight razor, utility knife, or scissors, and then peel that off the bill, lay it on your paper. Now you have your pattern or lay it on your poster board. Cut your poster board out, tape your poster board with cellophane so you can constantly always have it. Or if you're using a cereal box, do that. Do that so you can get your pattern down. Now once you do this, ladies and gentlemen, now this plastic that's in here, it is, it's not too thick that you can't, 
take your chisel punch to sew this on there. So the only uh, material, the only, the only material you're going to need is your scrap leather. You're going to have to buy these. That's the only thing that you're going to have to purchase. Everything else is scrap. So first, go through your scrap box. Make you however many you can make out of what's in your scrap box. I recommend three to four ounce, three ounce to four ounce leather. That's thick enough for you to stamp, carve, and tool onto whatever you're going to do. And then um, glue it. You're going to take your, your um, I think you guys saw my whale wood over there. Yep. Yeah. And right there. That's my whale wood. Lowe's. Seven bucks. You get that big old can for seven bucks. So you're going to well wood uh, this, well wood the bib, attach it on there, then run your punches, staple it on there. Now, if you have a hand punch where you can squeeze the punch, it, it will pierce the. It will pierce that. It will do that. I just don't want to work that hard. So I took my chisel punches because it can. It's already angled the chisel punch. Pow, 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 and go all the way through it. Then you just stitch it. Now. That's three down. My next one that I'm going to is these right here. I thought I brought it up. Yes, I did. Small projects. You guys saw this video already. Leather lighter cases. Very small project. Now you guys can see I ain't look. <laughs> I've already got these cut out because I'm this was something that I didn't even know there wasn't even a need for this. I I never knew it. And when I started one or two, you know, people, oh man, that's cool. Make me one. Oh man, how much are those? That's cool. Let me get one. One or two, you kind of just like, ah, you know, get okay, one there there. But when you start getting 10, 15, 20, everybody who, who knows any, man, they make perfect gifts. Somebody who knows somebody that's a smoker, they make perfect gifts. Not only can you go to the big lighters, now if, if you, uh, you can do Zippo cases. Yeah. A lot of your cigar. Now, that's going to be another project that I am working on because I really got to see how that's going to work. Um, I'm doing a lot of research on that, but a cigar case, a cigar case, a cigarette case. Now, I think leaning more toward the cigar cases because now you can, people who smoke cigars, I'm talking about stogies. Not them backwoods and then black and mouth. I'm talking about real $25, $30 cigars. And that's on the cheap end. Well, you can probably get some nice um, Arturo Fuentes for around six or seven bucks. And that's expensive for one cigar. You know, that's a pack of cigarettes for one cigar or a $10 cigar. But when you really get off into the good ones, like your Cubans, and 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 um, um, man, you can get in your Prince, uh, Prince Henry's. I mean, they can really get up to twenty or thirty dollars. But to really craft and design a three, four, or five cigar case, that's some money. Y'all stay tuned for that project. But let me get back to this finishing this. Uh, these little lighter cases, I didn't even know there was a need for this. So, but this wound up turning out to be a great project. Now, the only thing, uh, if you're going to maximize your dollars, I would tell you to uh you can buy these little these little no-name Bix offline. It's just the big shape, but it's not the big lighter. You can buy these offline for about three, four dollars a piece. Uh, invest in your 10 again, spend 35, 40 bucks. Because by the time you uh, create your leather uh, uh, bit case, you just turn this into another 15, 20 dollar project. So you, you out of the scrap again, you was already paid for a leather. So nice, light little tooling work. 
That's it. Sew it up. Drop your little imitation big off in there. Uh, and really, it is not really hard to push them in there. Once you get them in there, boom, it's going to form because it's only going to fit that bit. So even when they run out of the fluid in this one, it's very easy to pull it out. All you do is pull this out and then you replace it, pull that out, replace it with another bit and just drop it back in there. Of course, you want to get it started and then it just slides right on down in there. Boop. That's it. So, but these can be personalized. You can put their names on them, put their initials on them. And I think the selling point for these is the fact that nobody can steal their lighters because they'll be the only one with this, with the case. So, and you can sell these. I am finding success at selling these at, because a real big in the store is going to run you about $6.99 to $8.99, depending on the size. You can get them little bitty flat ones for about $4.99. But I'm not going to waste my time making a case that small. But uh, if you're selling the lighter with it, that's a $10 value just in the lighter. And then you attach another 15, 10, 15 bucks into the case. You can get rid of these all day long for $20 to $25. Great gifts. Uh, you can make these, you can make a lot of these because the pattern is the same. You're going to use the same amount of leather. So let's just say you got a, a nice, if you have any scrap leather that's at least four inches wide and it can be two feet, let's say it's two feet long where you have squared up a piece of hide uh, where you was truing it up to cut and you got uh, just take one of the, the legs off of the cow side. You can get at least six to eight of these out of just that leg on the side of the, 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 the cow hide that you just bought. So when you sit back and you're doing another 10, 20 of these, this is another one of those projects. You can get you a clear um, container and just make them up all different colors and just throw them in there. Boop. Easy peasy. That's four, four done. Now we're on the last one, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just gonna shoot this one in here. This is another one of these projects because I'm, I'm really proud of how this turned out. There wasn't even a need for this. Actually, um, this was something that was about to be thrown away because it was missing a couple of zeals. Now, the reason why I'm just doing this as an honorable mention in this particular video. But this is another small project that can make you a lot of money because bands, churches, schools, anywhere that has where somebody uses tambourine, tambourine, this is in the percussion session for those of you who didn't know. So you can sit back. If this was a school and the school has a band, every school has a band, uh, all the way up to colleges. Every uh even your 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 bar bands and your nightclub bands, if they have a drummer or um, backup singers, most of your backup singers got a tambourine. You know, this would be a nice project. Now, this was I, I did this one for the people in the church because churches are the other ones that have tambourines, and that's why it has the cross in there, nice little uh lily lily flower carved in right there. Uh let me see, can you guys see that? Yeah, you can see that artwork. But nice little tribal border on there. Very simple. And then we put the uh, leather band around this side here. Is that coming a little undone? No, that's glued down. Uh, but a nice little band to match it on the top. Now, the thing with this project was it changed the tone a little bit. So it has a little bit more deeper tone to it. But what I did was I ordered more zeals to replace the three uh, particular ones that was missing because whoever had this was really beating this thing to death. They beat the screws out of it. Now, <laughs> let me tell you how simple this was to fix this because if you got wire coat hangers, wire coat hanger is the same thickness of the nails that retain the zeals in here. 
Now, the, all of these are all open, uh, open right here. But what I done was I, um, I once, once when I used my snips, it left a point at the end of the wire hanger. So when I pushed it down through there, I took another nail and just tapped it to drive it into the wood. Then I came back with, and, and I made me some woods putty. So if anybody had any type of, uh, been right dealing with any type of woodworking at all, you just get the uh, sawdust, ran it through a sifter, mix that in with some wood glue, and packed it down the hole that I put the nail in there to make sure that the nail doesn't back back out again. So they can beat it as hard as they want to. Not to say that it won't come out, but it's going to have a harder time coming out now because it's packed with wood, not just with glue. It's packed with the sawdust and the glue, made it a little paste, and then we came back and just packed it and pushed it down in there. So it's going to be, a, uh, they're going to have to do some work to get the nails out of this one. But small projects. Now, this is something that if you wanted to get up into turning these, I would, again, hit AliExpress, Timu, Ali, uh, or Amazon, where you can buy tambourines cheap. They don't even have to be this size. Sometimes they have the little half moon kind. You get the half moon kind. All you want to do is be able to put the band or the school. Man, if you put this a school logo on this, the school band on this, the college band. Imagine a big old AU, Auburn University, and then you got the eagle carved into the back. And that thing is painted that beautiful blue and orange. Woo! Awesome sauce. That'll make me want to get the band. But a small project. Now, lastly, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to wrap this up real quick because this is a new project here that I'm going to do, and I just did a video on this, the beer cozies or beer koozies. This is going to be a great phenomenal project. And then we, I went with the very popular, uh, this basket weaving tool, basket weaving pattern that everybody is going a crazy over right now. So what I'm going to do here is uh, this can put somebody, I'm going to put my initials in here. So when I advertise these, now this takes a little bit more scrap, but scrap none the same. Now, if you want to dedicate, I would tell you to dedicate a single shoulder. Go spend you 40, 50 bucks on a single shoulder, three to four ounce, three to four ounce. And you can sit back and do these in sets of four, four or six. The pattern stays the same, and you guys can see I've snapped my logo in the in the very bottom. My logo don't be your logo needs to be in an inconspicuous place anyway. Uh, but uh, simple pattern. They're all gonna get either a basket weave. Um, I'm just playing around with this carving. I think I like the carving better than I like stamping because I can get it done very quickly. And then I'm just gonna stamp the initials in there. Now this is something that you can market to a whole host of people. As long as there are sports, you can sell these. Um, and you can sell a lot of them. Um, um, and that goes anywhere from uh, high school sports all the way up to pro, the pros. Uh, if you know anybody that um, are groomsmen, and I spoke about that on the other video, um, if, if groomsmen are the ones who get the worst gifts, but this is something that the groom can give all of his groomsmen in his party. He can give them a set of custom beer cozies. Now, if you really want to get snazzy jazzy, you can go someplace like Walmart and buy the frozen beer mugs. Or I wouldn't necessarily say do the frozen because they would have to put that leather hide into the freezer. I wouldn't recommend that. But the um you can get the beer mugs and then put you a leather band which will be less work than this actually i probably could do two of these bands on a leather on a mug or a tumbler or some uh cocktail cups 
you can you can do a lot especially with hot glue now where the hot glue is clear so it you won't it won't have that orangey brown tint if you try to glue the leather to a clear glass but you can use the hot glue which is clear and it doesn't you know they can just be looking at the leather on the outside now those stuff like that you can make a big grip Hey, you guys, I hope you guys got an idea of, of, of where we were trying to take you with this, uh, as well as I hope that you got something out of it, because these little projects like this, ladies and gentlemen, can make you a ton of money. You don't have to be swinging for the fences and doing the purses and the briefcases and the bowling bags and the guitar cases, you know, I, and the saddles. Everybody can't do a saddle. Now, I, and, and I would be the first one to tell you, hey, listen, that saddle game. Ain't nothing to play with. You're just not going to jump off into the leather crafting world and start making saddles and think that you're going to make a living off of it. It's going to be at least 15, 20 years. And that's what you, because when peop, people, what I know about that saddle industry, the horse and tack market, those people buy saddles like regular people buy cars. They will get rid of the horse before they get rid of that saddle. And then if you don't do that saddle right, that horse is going to throw you off of there. And these people are charged anywhere from seventy-five dollars to $15,000 on a custom saddle. Now, you're finding these ones out there that got a two, dollars $300 saddle, man. <laughs> One, that ain't real level. <laughs> no, that's not real level. And two, eh, I wouldn't touch it. But that... But you don't have to be um, in that side of the industry in order to make a lot of money. I know one guy that is a leather. He, he does custom watch bands. That's it. That's all he makes is watch bands. So imagine you got somebody that just dropped 15, 20,000 on a Richard Millie. Some cases, the rich millers can get up there. They can get up there into the 50s. But you, he just dropped, I'm going to say, a used, cheap Richard Millie anywhere from, eh, you might can find some that somebody don't want no more, the ugly ones, for about three, three grand. But then they bring in that $3,000 watch over to him to get a custom watch band made. So imagine what he's paying, charging for those custom leather watch bands. Look him up. He's on Instagram. I mean, he's making a lot of money. There's another guy that's uh, out in Arizona that does leather shoes, leather sandals. And that guy is charging $375. $375. See, it's, 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 it's all, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just one of those crafters that I spread my portfolio out because I don't want to box myself in. I do projects like this to challenge myself because I want to challenge my creativity. But you can do it as well. Uh, another small project or something that can be classified as a small project is the custom guitar straps. You guys have saw the video on this already. So if you want to do that, get linked up with a guitar center in your area or a, a pawn shop, a guitar shop, uh, a music store. Tell them, hey, look, I do custom guitar straps. And you're talking about anywhere from 175 up to 425 for a custom guitar strap. I'm the Leather Cowboy right here at Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South. I'll see you guys on the other side. Keep crafting. Peace. Let me get back to Chris Stapleton. All right, bro. For y'all that think that I do. I'm on the cowboy on the white horse, riding around in the sunset. <laughs> hey, I'll see y'all later.